In this video, we're going to look at how we can apply stoichiometry to thermochemical equations. So this is going to be a little bit of a review to start from our last video. And all we're going to do is we're going to take what we learned in our last video and extend it now to make it useful in stoichiometry. So uh, the example we had in the last video was that 2H2 plus O2 gas goes to 2H2O gas. And we said that the delta H for this reaction was equal to minus 483.6 kilojoules. Now the major thing that we learned in the last video was that we can think of this delta H as being either a product or a reactant in terms of the heat that's produced or the heat that's consumed depending on whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So in the case of an exothermic reaction like this, and I know that this is exothermic because the delta H is a negative, so the energy is being lost from the system, I can say that one of my products is going to be 483.6 kilojoules. So we can now relate this 483.6 kilojoules to any one of the stoichiometric coefficients. So I know that if I have for every two moles of H2, I'm going to get 483.6 kilojoules. And so, uh, or I should say minus 483.6 kilojoules this relationship that we have here can be used as a new feed into our mole relationship. So what I mean is we have moles and we know how to get from moles to mass and from moles to the number of particles. And in chapter four, we learned how to get there from volume using concentration. We learned how to get from gas information using PV equals NRT. And we learned now that we can convert energy in kilojoules using delta H as our conversion factor. So the delta H now becomes a new unit conversion that will allow us to go between energy that's produced or absorbed by a reaction and the number of moles. And then, of course, once we get to the number of moles, we can get to the number of moles of any other reagent. So now, again, we can apply all of our standard um, calculations, uh, limiting reagents, um, calculating one product to figure out how much energy is produced. Um, so all of these things can be applied to uh, thermochemical equations now. So let's take a look at some example questions where we use thermochemical equations to solve some problems with stoichiometry. So this one says, how much heat is evolved when 9.07 times 10 to the fifth grams of ammonia is produced according to the following equation? Now, in general, in, in thermochemistry, we're going to get to the point where we can start to make some assumptions that the reaction is taking place at a constant temperature, at a, I'm sorry, at a constant pressure. When we invoke delta H, so when we give you a reaction and we give you a delta H, at that point, you can assume that even if we don't write it in the equation, in the, in, in the question, that the reaction is taking place at a constant pressure. So you're going to start to see us leave that out of questions when we're working with delta H. So I just want to point that out because um, you may not see this reaction occurs at a constant pressure thing when delta H is there. So let's take a look at how we can actually solve this. So this thing says 9.07 grams of ammonia is produced um, according to the following equation. So how much heat is evolved when that amount is produced? So what they do is they give us a mass of ammonia And from this, they want us to get a energy of, or heat energy produced. So what we can do now is we can get them, we can easily get the mass to moles of NH3. And then once we're in moles of NH3, we can use delta H to go from moles to the heat produced. So let's take a look and see how we can work this problem uh, using stoichiometry. So this one says 9.07 times 10 to the fifth grams. And um, we have to get this from mass to moles, so we're going to use the molecular mass. So the molecular mass of NH3 is 17.0 grams for every one mole of NH3. So now we're in moles of NH3, and now we have to use the delta H. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the stoichiometric coefficient and we see that it's a 2. So we know that for every 2 moles of NH3, we're getting minus 91.8 kilojoules of heat energy. So now my recommendation is when you do this is 
just use the delta H with the exact sign that it has. So if it has a minus sign, keep the minus sign when you write your unit conversion, minus 91.8 kilojoules per two moles of NH3. Now the reason why I suggest that is because if you have the minus sign there, it automatically tells you the direction of the heat flow. So in some cases, we may say how much heat is evolved, in which case we're not asking you for the direction. If we say something to the effect of include, you know, you always want to include a sign to denote the, 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 the direction that the heat is being transferred. So the easiest thing to do is to just keep that sign when you plug it in and you will always get the right answer. Even if we ask you how much heat is evolved, meaning we tell you the direction already in the, the, the question, it's still a good idea to keep that sign. So when you work this out, you take 9.07 times 10 to the fifth times negative 91.8 divided by 17 and then divided by two, you get two minus 2.45 times 10 to the sixth kilojoules of energy. And then that's, that's it. So that, that shows you how quickly and easily you can apply delta H. All it is is you take the delta H number and the coefficient from the balanced equation and you're, you've got a new unit conversion that you can use. So let's look at the second one. The second one says, a reaction of methane gas uh, with water requires 206 kilojoules of heat per mole of methane. Okay, so this one is giving us information that we could potentially write a delta H, but it's not giving us a delta H outright. It says, calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas produced if the reaction absorbed 15.89 kilojoules at a temperature of 21.2 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 9.89 atmospheres. So for this problem, unlike the first problem, we don't get a delta H off the bat. We have to use our ability to write thermochemical equations um, to put a delta H in here. And the information that's going to allow us to do that is this first line. It says six kilojoules of energy per mole of methane. So we know that our, for every one mole of methane, there is 206 kilojoules of energy. So using our ability to write thermochemical equations, we look to see what our coefficient is in the balanced reaction. It's a one, so we're good. So we can say that delta H here is plus 206.0 kilojoules. Now, how did I know about the plus? That's because it says requires. So requires would be an indicator that this is a reactant or something that needs to be added to the reaction in order to make it happen. So this is an endothermic reaction. So that first step is really not part of the stoichiometry. It's just another way that we can give you information where you would have to work this out using your knowledge of writing thermochemical equations to get delta H. Okay, now it says calculate the volume of carbon monoxide gas produced if the reaction absorbed 15.89 kilojoules at a temperature of 21.2 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 0.989 atmospheres. So this time we're getting a kilojoules of energy. We're getting 15.89 kilojoules of energy. Now, we know that in the end, it's asking us for a volume of the gas. Oops, just one S in gas. So I know that to get to a volume of the gas, I'm gonna need my number of moles of the um, carbon monoxide because um, in PV equals NRT, I can get to the number of, I can get to the volume if I have the number of moles, because I also have the temperature and I also have the pressure. So I have the pressure, the temperature, and if I get the number of moles, I have all three variables that I need in order to get the volume. So then the first step is gonna have to be going from kilojoules to mole using my delta H. So let's set that up. So the first step is to take our 15.89 kilojoules, and just as a check, uh, I have absorbed, so I know this is plus 15.89 kilojoules. It's always good to write the sign down and then we follow our, our pattern. So I'm going from kilojoules to moles, so I put kilojoules on the bottom, 206 kilojoules, and then I look to see how many moles of CO are in that balanced reaction. It's one mole of CO in my balanced reaction. So now I can get to moles by dividing the 15.89 by 206, and this gives me 0 0.07714 moles of CO. So now the last step is to just set up my PV equals NRT. So what I did was I reorganized my PV equals NRT to get my volume all by itself. So that's NRT over P. And then I plug in my number of moles of gas that I formed. 
I plug in my gas constant. I plug in my temperature which is 21.2 degrees Celsius plus 273.15. And if you guys want, you can actually set that up separately. You don't have to do that in your calculator in line. You can, you can set this up over here like we were doing in Chapter 5 and automatically convert. That's up to you. And then we have 0 0.989 atmospheres down below. Okay, so now this is going to give me a volume equal to 1.88 liters. And that's my final answer. So you see two examples of how you can use stoichiometry. One goes from information about a reactant to the energy, and the other one goes from energy to the information about the reactant. And the amazing thing about this now, and this, this, completes, the, the, this completes the flow chart. This is the last entry into our flow chart. Um, so now you can go from any one of those inputs, mass, particles, um, volume of a solution, uh, volume, pressure, or temperature data, and uh, kilojoules in a thermochemical equation, all five of those inputs, and you can get to any other reactant um, by doing limiting reagent problems or anything like that. So, um, so that's really a powerful tool. So this requires some practice, and um, you can take a look in the textbook. There's a whole plethora of these these examples, but this shows you the breadth and scope of what we could potentially have on this exam.